How are we doing guys? All these TV investigates and this week the focus is on Gianni Alioski, a player who divides opinion like no other. You know, there's a lot of, um, he's not been in the best of form recently, but why has Marcelo Bielsa kept faith in the player? You know, he's had the former Jack Clark, the former Jack Harrison at the start of the season, but he's never ever looked to rotate Gianni Alioski. In fact, Alioski's only missed one minute of league action all, the, all season. He got taken off on the first game of the season, late on for Jack Harrison, but he's not missed one minute of league action since that. Only Bailey Peacock Farrell can actually say he's played um, every minute of the league so far this season. But in terms of outfielders, no one comes close to Gianni Alioski in terms of minutes played. The stats then, what do the stats say? So in an attacking sense, three goals, three assists. Only three other Leeds players have managed more than that this season. Pablo Hernandez, Matthias Click, Kemal Roof. He's second in the team for key passes. You know, in terms of passes that lead to shots, lead to chances, etc, etc. Of course, key passes, you know, stats can sometimes be misleading, but that's still an impressive stat. And Pablo Hernandez has managed more in this Leeds team. That's actually puts him sixth in the entire league. He's second for most crosses in the Leeds team at the minute. Only Pablo Hernandez has managed more again. Again, it's showing the wide players, you know, trying to get crosses into the box. And Gianni Oski is doing his side of the bargain. He's putting 1.5 crosses in a game Sorry, 1.5 accurate crosses a game, which is potentially 1.5 chances a game from those kind of positions. He's the second most foul player in this Leeds team, which gives key players like Pablo Hernandez, Barry Douglas, set-piece opportunities. You know, both We know both can take set-pieces, we know both can score from set-pieces, so that's, again, creating chances for the team. You know, indirectly, you know, to a certain extent. But again, another impressive stat in an attacking sense. Defensively, again, something he does get pre credit for, but 1.8 tackles a game so far. Only Matthias Click outside of the defenders has managed more. So he's showing that he's learning this Bielsa style of play. You know, it's a high press in that level. We're going to go through that later on in the video. In terms of the rest of the league, in terms of the rest of the league, sorry, only two left wingers have managed more goals and assists than Eshan Ayoski this season. Ollie Watkins and Joe Lolly. You know, it might seem that Alioski isn't contributing, but considering he's playing out of position, I think he is having a decent season. You know, I'm not going to say he's been outstanding so far this season, but clearly the stats show he hasn't done so badly so far. You know, you look at the other options, Jack Clark, Jack Harrison, Stuart Dallas. In terms of, obviously, maybe it's harsh to include Jack Clark in that analysis, maybe Tyler Roberts even, when he's played in that sort of position. None of them have come close to the same level of end products in that position as Gianni Alioski has. So, I see a lot of... Um, Comments that Johnny Oski has no end products. That's not necessarily true. You know, he, he does have end product, but there's other elements to his game which I think are weak. But his end products isn't one of them for me. And we're going to go through tactically now what Johnny Oski brings to this team from the left hand side. So we're going to look tactically at what Johnny Oski brings to this team. And the first thing is he keeps the width. One thing Marcelo Bielsa loves is pace and width. And there's two things can become a bit too congested in this Leeds team. With Pablo Hernandez on the right hand side. He loves when we're on in possession to drift in and out of different positions. Often he can end up very, very sort of central, and not very often sort of hugging the tuck line like this. He's very much sort of drifting into central positions. I um, mean, left back comes here, and centre backs, and it all becomes very congested. Obviously, you've got so much Saez and Matthias Click. You need the out ball in that side of situation. Johnny Ayoski offers that. He's a natural sort of left-sided player or can play on that left-hand side. He can offer this kind of width, all these runs in behind. And he can give Sam Rousseys, Matthias Click, Pablo Hernandez, that out ball to play to. He also, you know, what he gives there as well is a one-two option to keep the counter attacks moving. Sam Rousseys has the ball. He's congested. Centre-back's coming here. He can play that quick one-two to Alioski and get around, and can get around like that as well. Another thing he offers, he can take the right back out of the game. You know, if we were saying before about the game being congested, Sam Rousseys, Matthias Click, Pablo Hernandez all playing very close to each other. Right back's got to watch Alioski. He's always sort of trying to hug that touchline, stay as wide as possible, which Marcelo Bielsa likes, and it allows one of Sam Rousseys, Matthias Click, to run in that gap between the right back and centre back. You know, it's a very, you know, it's been key so far this season. I can't think of so many goals this season that have come from those kind of situations against um, Wigan. You know, you had Matthias Click running into this space. I know it was Barry Douglas on the ball, but some um, all came from Alioski being on that left-hand side, very tight to the touchline. Matthias Click made the run, and Pablo Hernandez scored the goal from that situation. So it is creating goals for us, and it also can have the reverse effect. Although a little bit less common, it can have the reverse effect as well. 
where some would say is Matthias Klick, Pablo Hernandez, create space for Alioski. You know, all three of these are real, real goal threats. Well, threats to the team in any kind of sense. And it's right back. We won't be tempted to make to do this. Alioski can get in behind there. What I really like about Leofsky is his ability to run to that back post. You know, he's so good at running to that back post. You know, look at his goals against um, Derby. Ball's on this side of the pitch. Pablo Nan has got a quick cross into the box. And Alioski's making a diagonal run into that back post and gets a good goal. He also got um, created this situation at Norwich. Similar run off the back post. Run into the back post diagonally. It was a save, I think Matthias Click taps it in. All from those kind of situations. You look at his other goals, Birmingham as well. Sammy Saez played a little ball over. Alioski made that diagonal run. It's impossible, really difficult for a right back to stop that run. You know, a diagonal run, you know, trying to cut the pass out, um, trying to stop Alioski himself when he's all the momentum's on his side. You know, it's a real key it's a real key threat really, and you have to look at Alioski as well. He's been unlucky at times, you know, against Stoke. He's forced a great save. Preston, he had an onside goal that wasn't given. Hull, yes, it was a poor miss, but he got into the position from that back post. Ipswich, he hit the bar, well, actually the crossbar. West Brom, he missed a good chance. You know, I think more goals will come for Alioski from that position. He's so good at running into that back post and getting in behind the right back as these other three occupy occupy the other defenders, really. He frees up that space for Alioski to cause problems for the opposition. Another key thing is the return of Barry Douglas. Now, with Barry Douglas, Alioski has managed three goals and two assists in 13 games, compared to one assist in four games without him. Clearly a big, big difference. Barry Douglas can play the passes into Alioski, where Alioski just needs to touch the ball well, and he's away from the right back. You know, Douglas has a lovely way to pass, particularly going into these, into the channels, really. Um, you know, we saw against Stoke, Barry Douglas got the ball down, played it into the other. Alioski, Alioski made the goal for Pablo Hernandez against Derby. Won the passes of the season off Barry Douglas of his first touch. Alioski makes a lovely run. Great ball in the box. Camaru scores. A lot of situations. I think Alioski's goal against Norwich came from Barry Douglas' vision. Played the ball in into Camaru and Alioski made the run. There's an understanding there between Barry Douglas and Alioski. It clearly shows when... Barry Douglas plays, you get more out of Alioski for me. And I think certainly the last couple of weeks he's looked a lot sharper since Barry Douglas has come back into the team. Still maybe not at the level he was at the start of the season, but he has looked sharper nonetheless. Now the other thing is, with playing Alioski, someone instead of Alioski, it's a situation of inverted wingers and how it destroys sort of the Bielsa system, having two inverted wingers. If you say, for example, you play Jack Clark. I've not actually got Jack Clark on this um, diagram, but say Stuart Downs, I'd say he's Jack Clark for now. You've got a situation where Jack Clark wants to cut in on his right foot. These two want to create chances. Pablo Nandes wants to drift everywhere. There's no width at all in the team, and it destroys sort of our momentum. You know, we need that sort of out ball, that other option, and everything becomes too narrow, and we lose our fluidity. You know, we haven't got that sort of you know, that little sideways pass, you know, to keep the momentum building, everything becomes too narrow. And it relies a lot on individual skill and long range shots, you know, off one of these four for our goals. And we cannot just rely on that. You know, our tactics need to be more fluid than that. And I think we've not tried it at all this season. I mean two inverted wingers. One inverted winger is one inverted two winger too many from last other say In an ideal world I think he'd want two out and out wingers. But yeah, I certainly can't see that you know, later on in the season. It becomes too narrow, the pitch becomes, becomes too too narrow. It just doesn't really work for me in this kind of system. Everything needs to be a little quick pace, and you need that left, natural left-sided option, like in Alioski, to play the one, the first-time passes, to keep momentum building. Now, another side is the quick tactical changes, what Alioski can bring. A lot of them do revolve around Alioski. You'd have to go to... He'd have moved to left back in a certain situation. He'd move into left wing back if we went for a back three. Um, oops, is he? Um, you go to a back three, um, or you go on to the left wing in a fluid front three. He has that tactical fluidity, or even he can go on to the right wing. That I think that's something Marcelo Bielsa likes as well. Very tactically flexible. It is Gianni Alioski. He can play in a variety of positions, and that should suit very well in a Marcelo Bielsa system. 
Another element is we're looking more off the ball now. The energy he offers when he leads the press. I've already touched on how him and Matthias Click clearly lead the way in terms of tackles won you know, from the midfielders this season. Um, aside from Calvin Phillips, of course. That shows he can lead the press. You know, he's got that energy to get up and down, pressurise the right back, pressurise the centre back, and just win the ball high up the pitch. Particularly at the start of the season, that was something Alioski was doing fantastically well. And there's another advantage he has over others. Would, say for example, a Jack Harrison be as comfortable pressing the right back here, dropping back, pressing the centre back, dropping back? Would a Jack Clark be experienced enough to play that system to know how to conserve energy as well as an Alioski? Possibly, possibly not. Or even the Tyler Roberts. We haven't seen that element from Tyler Roberts or Jack Harrison when they are playing on the left hand side. Another thing is, as I already said about the Douglas understanding, he allows Barry Douglas freedom. Barry Douglas can push forward in the knowledge that Johnny Alioski, a former left back, can drop in here and cover here as well. No one stops more crosses this season than Johnny Alioski. He's so good at stopping the quick counters by winning the ball or using his pace to get back into position very, very quickly. Again, showing his defensive awareness, he's a big game player. In the big games, you need someone to double up on the winger in situations. <coughs> you know, his best performances this season have come in the big games for me. Stoke City, Derby, Norwich, against the better teams. But there's another reason for that as well, in an attacking sense, why that's happening. Against the better teams, more often than not, seeing the fullbacks push forward more often. And that's making it easier for Alioski to play to his strength. His strength is getting in behind rather than dribbling past players. And he's more able to do this. You know, against Stoke, he got an assist. Against Derby, he got a goal and assist from getting in behind the fullbacks with ease. Against Norwich, again, got an assist. He got gets in behind the fullbacks a lot easier against the bigger teams who try and attack a little bit more and go for the win against us. So that's tactically what Gianni Alioski brings to this team. But if Gianni Alioski offers so much, what's the reason for this video? Why are we even looking into this video? Well, there is clearly two big weaknesses in Gianni Alioski's game. The first one is dribbling for me. He only completes 0.1 dribbles per game. He attempts 0.5, has a success rate of 20%, and that's by far the lowest of the whole team. You know, I think that's certainly something you can work on. When he was playing on the right-hand side last season, he was completing 0.9 a game with a much better success rate. Clearly, I think he prefers dribbling at players on his favourite position. But can he rely solely on using his pace to get in behind and create situations? Does he need to take the ball more often, you know, two feet and dribble at players? For me, that certainly is something he needs to work on. I think that's certainly another side of our game. You know, in an attacking sense, breaking down tight opposition to try and... To try and Part the bus to an extent, you know, I think that's something we do need a bit more of. The wings are happy to dribble and use their pace, and that's something Alioski can do, but he has to show that confidence for me. That's one side of this game I think he can work on, and maybe it would give us another sort of element to our game. And the other thing is staying on side. That's something I don't think he's done very well this season. I do understand the criticism of that. He's been offside twice as often as any other Leeds player so far this season, 1.3 times a game. In his defence, you know, it's not always his fault. You know, it is the style of play he's been asked to play. He's, you know, to get in behind, playing in the four-one-four-one, playing so deep in comparison to where he would be playing in the front three. He has to sort of play. He has to sort of play on, um, you know, on the on the margins to the extent. You know, he, he's not always going to be on side, but I guess yeah, he needs to be stay on side more often than that than that. One other element to his game is off the ball. At times, I can be critical. For example, when he loses the challenge, when he loses the ball, and there's some, there's a tough challenge gone in. Sometimes he can, for me, complain a little bit too much. You know, I think that's um, obviously there's other players who do that as well, but it puts us at risk of quick counters more than anything. You know, when someone, I think against West Brom, there's an example. I think it was Matt Phillips. He did put in a strong challenge. Maybe it was a bit over the ball, but for me, you have to carry on with the game at times, and that's something I think Alioski does need to work on. You know, it does leave us at risk of quick counter-attacks. So when he's not sort of in position, when he's more bothered about the actual challenge that's gone in, that is something I think he can work on as well. But again, I'm going to defend him because he's not playing in his best position. All season he's been playing out of position on the left-hand side, where his only real chances of getting goals are for the vertical runs in behind. You, know, you look from distance, playing on the left-hand side with your left foot, you're not necessarily getting as many angles to shoot from distance. There's also been Ebay Gomez mentioned, but would Ebay Gomez offer the other elements which Gianni Alioski offers? Obviously, I would be looking at another winger, 
not necessarily because of I don't like Gianni Ioski. I do like Gianni Ioski as a player. He clearly is offering something to this team. But we do need other elements to our game, you know, a bit more pace and dribbling ability. But there's one crucial thing here. Gianni Ioski is a big part of this team. He creates a space and keeps the team moving. He keeps the team flowing. In the second sense and the defensive sense, he can cover. He's the first on the cover on the counter-attack. And in the big games, he is someone you want in this team. He isn't, the best in the, he isn't the best in the league in his position, but he creates a space to make others play better. And for me, I hope this video has helped to... As that is like a Gianni Alioski appreciation video. He's not the best in the league, but for me, I don't think anyone in this team epitomises side before self more than Alioski in this team. He's selfless, he creates a space for others, and he makes the team play better, even if it's at the expense, at the expense of his own game, you know, which passes to someone in a more dangerous position rather than trying to take on situations on his own. But he is a big key part of this team for me and will remain a key part of this team throughout the season, no matter what, for Marcelo Bielsa and for Leeds United, no matter who we sign in January. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out Joe Wayman's Monday Night Football, another superb one this week and Connor will be doing Friday Night Football later on in the week as well. I've been Oscar Marriott, All East TV and thanks very much for watching. And make sure you leave in the comments down below your thoughts on Alioski this season. Has he been over-criticised and do you rate him in this Bielsa team? And can he only improve in this Bielsa team as well? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.